Hello everyone, my name is Farah Aini Sofia from SMK Abdul Rahman Tadik and I am from 4GG. So today we are going to learn about, yes, correct, electromagnetic waves or we can call it as EM wave. So there are four things that we are going to cover in this subtopic. Number one is definition of EM waves. Number two, list members of EM waves. Number three, eight common properties of EM waves. And the last one, application of EM waves to be specific ultraviolet radiation. So first and foremost, what is EM waves? So EM waves are propagating waves in a space with electric field and magnetic field components. So that means they combine together and form electromagnetic Okay, these components oscillate at perpendicular angles to each other and to the direction of propagation. So here in figure 1, as you can see, the Y axis represents the electric field while the Z axis represents the magnetic field. Okay, uh, if that doesn't clear enough, let's just watch this video. Yes, you see the magnetic field and electric field, they are oscillating perpendicular or we can say right angles to each other uh, then the direction should be the same which is to the right hand side or to the x axis so here we can conclude that EM waves is actually a transverse wave next least member of EM waves or we can call it as electromagnetic spectrum so as you can see in the table we split electromagnetic and the seven basic types but actually, they are all part of a continuous spectrum. So you might be asking, what actually differentiates them? So the answer is their wavelength and their frequency, which are inversely proportional to each other. So that means uh, if one goes up, the other one goes down. Then if you read the table from left to right, the frequency increases and the wavelength decreases. Therefore, gamma rays have the highest energy due to its high frequency while radio waves have the lowest energy due to its low frequency okay now let's take a look at the common properties of m waves okay first the energy energy can be transferred through the vibrations of electric and magnetic fields number two the polarization okay as we all know electromagnetic waves is a transverse wave so it can be polarized because their vibration is perpendicular to the direction of energy travel. Next, uh, exhibition. They can show uh, the phenomenon just like what we have learned before which are reflection, refraction, diffraction and also interference. Okay, number four, the equation. We can calculate the wave speed by using this formula V equals to F lambda. Okay, moving on to number 5, the speed. It travels at the same speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second uh, in a vacuum. While in other medium like solid or liquid, it travels at lower speed. Easy way to remember, in vacuum, high speed, in other medium, low speed. Okay, next, the medium. It does not require medium to propagate, so that's why it can travel through vacuum. Number 7. The charge is neutral, so there is no transfer of charges happen between them, so they cannot be deflected or diverted by the allergy and magnetic fields. Okay, the last one. The direction. Uh, magnetic and electric fields components of the wave oscillate at the right angles to each other and to the direction of propagation of the waves. Okay, now it's time to talk about ultraviolet radiation. But first of all, what is ultraviolet? Ultraviolet is a form of electromagnetic radiation with wavelength shorter than visible light but longer than X-rays. It's the most powerful one that cannot be seen or felt by anyone. But the question is, where does it come from? So it comes from the mighty sun and also UV lamp. Okay, number three, types of ultraviolet rays. These rays come in three forms. The first one is UVA or near UV which has wavelength of about 315 to 400 nanometers. 
The second one, UVB or middle UV, which has wavelength about 280 to 315 nanometers. And the last one, which is the most destructive one, UVC or far UV, which has a wavelength of about 180 to 280 nanometers. So although UVC is the most destructive among them, fortunately, they are absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, which is the protective layer of gases surrounding the planet, so that it doesn't reach the Earth's surface. And it is mostly of UVA rays that we get exposed to on a daily basis. And at times, UVB can penetrate or come through the atmosphere, causing damage to people who are exposed to these rays. Okay, the last one. The characteristic based on the V equals to F lambda. The frequencies of about 8 times 10 to the power of 14 to 3 times 10 to the power of 16 hertz. Wavelength of about 380 nanometers to about 10 nanometers. And lastly, speed about 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second through a vacuum. So you might be asking, what is the use of UV rays? So these are application of UV rays in our daily life. First, disinfectant and sterilization. UV light is capable of killing viruses and bacteria. So they will become inactive after being exposed to UV light. As example, in medicine industry such as hospitals, we use UV rays for proper sterilization of surgical instruments before the surgery is done. So the chances of bacteria and viruses can live in the instruments can be lowered. Next, water purification. This is the most reliable method used in cleansing water. What it will do is, UV ray will penetrate a harmful pathogen in water and destroy illness-causing microorganisms such as bacteria or protozoa by attacking their genetic core, uh, which is DNA, for daily use. This is an efficient way in eliminating their ability to reproduce. Uh, some additional facts, uh, UV rays used in this method is chemical-free. This is because it does not contain any chemicals like chlorine or leave any harmful byproduct. Okay, the last one. UV rays also can cure skin disorders by using the UV light. When the UV light is shown on the skin, it helps to reduce the inflammation of swollen muscles such as eczema or vitiligo. It also helps in reducing the rate at which the skin cells get produced. When the skin cells are produced with little amounts, thereby it will delay the aging process. But the vital question is, how do these seemingly innocent radiation can cause so much damage to us? So let's see the side effects. One of the common side effects is the eyes problem. So as we all know, eyes are sensitive to UV radiation. So short exposure of a few seconds can result in painful, temporary condition which is known as photokeratitis and also conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis is the inflammation of the conjunctiva, which is the white part of our eyeball, while photocratis on the cornea of our eyes. So this condition uh, will cause discomfort rather than pain. Not just that, absorption of UVA in the lens may be a factor in producing cataract. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching.